So this week we're going to get balls deep in some elm burr, or burl, as our friends across the pond call it. I'm going to redo those speaker stands to match the uh, desk you saw last. I still don't know what happened here. Even though I changed the blades of a lower tooth count, like 12 teeth or something, it really struggled. I mean, I had to smash it, smash the saw through. It went through eventually, but it wasn't the same on the other cuts. Even though the piece the wood was flat, it wasn't binding. So, who knows? One day I'm going to build myself a bench with a carpenter's vice that can live outside because this makes a hell of a mess in your workshop. You don't realise it till you've finished it as well and everything's covered in it. I can't recommend enough a dust mask when doing this. <coughs> The same deal as before, 30 mil bread, point bit, very very sharp. I again needed to try and get rid of that square shape because most of the board here wasn't square and I also feel it gives it more surface area to, to look at, you know, it shows you more grain than just one flat or two flat planes. thinking here was that grain's pretty punky and soft so I wanted to try and make it a bit harder before I got stuck into sanding so I'm just painting on some epoxy really and a quick reminder dark things go if you don't sand them you know the higher the grit the lighter your finished piece will look having sanded those to about 500 grit I then do a coat over it to seal it before going in for the first pour. I've got to say, after the amount of epoxy I've done so far, I don't like this flame torch for uh, getting rid of the bubbles. I think I prefer the, the heat gun. It easily burns the epoxy. If you're going to do any epoxy pouring, I'd pour it about lunchtime and babysit it for the rest of the day. It was a bit like fucking whack-a-mole this. All afternoon. Lovely. There must have been a whacking great big cavern space inside that. Because that did not stop. And you get to the point you just say, fuck it, I'm going for a beer. But this went tits up pretty quickly. The heat rocketed. I mean, it started steaming off of it. And it got so hot, what was in the bucket left went rock hard. So I tried to pour off some from that. And as you can see, it had already gone hard within about an hour's time, I'd say. Inside looked like it was just cooking the wood. Hence all these bubbles. What a nightmare. So I've got to clean it up somehow, I'll try and save it anyway. I'm not doing this again. I get pretty bored of that Dremel tool sometimes. It's good for little stuff, but I just wanted this done and out of the way. So I bought out the big guns, but I need to buy a Makita version of this. I think this is some cheap shitty make called Katsu or something like that, but it's useless. If it gets so hot after about 10 minutes worth of work, you've got to put it down. It's crap. One of those tools that I don't use that much, so I can't be bothered to spend 300 quid on something I don't use a lot of. But there you go, that's how it looked to the end once I cleaned it up. Ready for another pour. Any epoxy I had left over, I kept pouring into the rest of that burr. And that's what I've got there. So I'm going to put through the planer with clenched buttocks. Because that would, I would have thought would have exploded, but it didn't. I should add I was only doing about half mil passes as well. Softly, softly, catchy monkey. 
All that revealed some punky grain. Now you can always look what the word punky means, but it's basically soft grain. It's the best way I can explain it. And I'm using this stub on stuff to uh, make it go rock hard. But look what happens here. Okay. That's why my eyes were stinging. So anyway, I went around the other side of the table to uh, get away from that and then realised <laughs> my eyes are still stinging. Let's take it outside. Strange stuff, eh? The short story of this though is I'm just fucking about. I'm experimenting with what finishes are going to look good with this bird. And this, in, it's okay. The end result I was after was a satin finish. A solid, a nice flat finish, but this was a bit too close to shiny for me as well. As too dark as well. When you see the end result with the epoxy base, it kind of makes more sense. And when I did this, yeah, I was sure. I don't like that dark finish. I want it to be as close to that as possible. And that's them after I've fixed them up as best I can and poured more epoxy over it. Not terrific, are they? But hey-ho, just got to flatten the bastards now. Epoxy I use, it's very brittle and I'm forever repairing it because it's so brittle. I also don't recommend doing this too often or unless you've got your shoulders locked putting that saw back like that. I agonised over this for weeks. How, how am I going to do the top? What do I want the top to look like? Do I also want it to be a statement or do I just want the base and the stand to be the star of the show? I'm what I did here is probably going to piss a few people off, but it absolutely works and was the best best choice. With most repairs, I find you're going to make them worse to make them better. And epoxy is definitely one of those cases. If you pour the epoxy in or whatever you're using to fix it, it can sit on a layer of, of air and then you go to sand it and you find yourself you've got another hole to fill, which is exactly what happens here. Little fucker. See that white hole? And now quickly knock up a template for the mortise in the base and the lid. Double-sided carpet tape from Tessa. You don't need a lot of it, you really don't, because it really sticks. That will go a long way, that roll. I know it's expensive, but worth it. Never had a template fly off me with a router before. This is actually quite funny to me. I showed you the 500 grit 
and stupidly started with a thousand grit. I had to uh, go through this process twice because I started with a thousand grit. Going from um, 220 scratches to 1000 was too much and you, you can see the scratches all the way through me doing this despite trying to polish them out. So yeah, I did it twice and got rid of the scratches and polished them up nice. I love this blade, a 6mm curve, worth the 80 quid, definitely. I stupidly didn't do a test piece here, I just went straight into it. Or did I get lucky because that is a lovely fit straight off. I would recommend in rounding the ends of these tenons off before you went and cut to length to size. Not that it's a big deal because it's still going to go in there and still fit perfectly, just no one's going to know there's a little gap in that mortise. <laughs> Same deal for the lid and and a nice little chamfer. The chamfer bit I'm using here wasn't quite big enough, so that left me with some uh, cleaning up to do and extend that chamfer. So I had a nice five mil right angled lip on the top, which was important because I wanted that base to disappear into the base of the speakers, if you were. So the base and the speaker looked as one, and then the speaker stand itself just looked like yeah, it's just beautiful. I've given up on uh, that Japanese te technique, burning wood, to get that black look. It's a real pain in the ass. It really changes the shape of the wood as well. Black ink, uh, sorry, Indian ink, works better, way, way better. Just don't get it on your hands. This is going to be a little bit controversial. Most people say you do not need to go that high with the grits for wood, and generally I'd agree, most finishes won't take. But I applied this so lightly, and admittedly it did take a while to uh, cure, more than it would normally if you'd just gone to 220 grit. I'm using Osmo Poly X satin, if I remember rightly. I then once I put it on a coat and let it sit for a few minutes and then come back with a paper towel and wipe off any excess so there's no brush, well, rag marks, not brush marks and let that cure for 24 hours and then I came back and did a second coat and it worked out just fine. I probably wouldn't recommend going so high in the grits if you're going to be doing something like a table where people, there's going to be traffic, human traffic over it. Um, it won't hold up, giving this is no one's going to be touching it or doing anything with it. It should be perfectly fine. That's my thinking anyway. Same deal with the lid, except what I realised here when I went to put the finish on was how rough it felt. Um, given Indian inks water-based, I should have sprayed 
the uh, lid with water, raised the grain, and then sanded it, and then put on the ink. But uh, I put enough finish on it that it uh, wasn't too rough. And then I went over it with um, very fine wire wool, which didn't uh, take or lift any stain or, or anything. It looked uh, good in the end. And it was a matte finish, like the speakers are. Now these really finish it off so much better than the crap I used before. Big, chunky, much better looking. I really like those. Check for square. Just a quick comparison shot between the matte and the shiny finish. And there's the crappy ones I'm replacing, which will be at the correct height too. final exam will be coming up at the end of this week. The test will be comprised of 20% written, 30% oral, and 50% <laughs>